There is a word from the Lord on today. And as we as we go into the word of God on today, I ask that you would go with me to the book of Joshua. Joshua, the book of Joshua. Amen. Chapter 1. I want to lift up a few verses of scripture here, if that's all right with you. Mm -hmm. I just want to lift up really verse 6 and verse 7, if that's all right. We're reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it may read a little different. But it reads like this. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put these people in possession of the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong. And very courageous. But be careful to act in accordance with the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from the left or to the right so that you may be successful wherever you go. Amen. 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 That the spirit should allow and in the spirit of this being African American History Month. I want to preach from the subject, the church after the wilderness. The church after the wilderness. The grass withers and the flowers, they all fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. The church after the wilderness. I need your prayers. Get a few amens, we might can cut that 25 to 20. Amen. It is a fact that the church has been a part of the African American community for as long as we've been on this continent. Religion has played an important part in the life of all, not just African Americans, but if anyone of African descent. Before we were ever put on boats, before we were ever brought across the Atlantic Ocean in a transatlantic trade, we were spiritual people living in the land that bore us, but that was blessed and given to us from the Almighty. Before we ever had to change our names from Kunta to Toby. Y'all ain't gonna help me. There was something on the inside of us that's always had a deeper connection to God than those that thought that we were less than human. There, 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 it, it is a fact that, that not just in 1619 when the first African slaves got off the boat that, 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 that we got religion, but we had religion way before that. And so it is interesting that now that we have lived life, now that God has brought us from a mighty long way, that we find ourselves more disconnected from the church than ever before. Oh, you might as well say amen, it's not going to get any better. But, 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 but I, I stopped by today to encourage us, to let us know that there is still a church That's after God's own heart. There is still a a remnant of people that still believe that God can do all things but fail. There there, there are still some believers, Ebenezer, that that believe that no matter how far we've come, no matter how far we have to go, as long as we have God on our side, nothing is impossible. Yeah, 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 I'm just a believer today that, that, that that the same the same spirit that, that, that resided in our foreparents still reside in us now. That, that is something in our DNA, y'all. That, that, that when we hear the tinkering of musical notes, when we get in the presence of God, that when we call on his name, that 
something begins to happen, it begins to wake us up on the inside and it lets us know that no matter what we're dealing with, no matter where we are, that there's a God somewhere. Lord have mercy. That still sits high and looks low, but moreover he still watches over us. And it's interesting because in the Bible we see, we see this theme, this central theme of God moving amongst his people. Uh, and, and this account that we're going to deal with today, it, it's interesting because something happens in this account that, that is very reminiscent of our only, of our walk in this country as African Americans. Uh, and, and if I can just get right to it, let's take a walk around the text. We see that in Joshua 1 that, that something has happened. Uh, the church Church, the people of God that left Egypt are now at the banks of the promised land once again and as they are there they are poised to walk into the promise that God has given them uh, they are poised uh, to receive that which God told them many years ago could be theirs uh, and here they are standing on the banks but now there's a little difference between how they were now and how they were before uh, before Moses was the leader you, you know Moses Moses was the one who, who was on the back side of an Egyptian desert saw, saw a burning bush that was not being consumed and the voice says take off your shoes uh, for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground uh, and the voice began to tell him uh, I have a job for you to do I need you to go down to Egypt uh, and tell Pharaoh uh, that I've heard the cries of my people and it's time to lift them out of bondage uh, and to allow them to go and, and to be free uh, from all that we uh, all that you have done to them Mike died over here. That's why I got a big enough mouth. <laughs> and we see that, that, that they, they left Egypt. But as they left Egypt, as they, as, as they left um, what they had known all those years, they now find themselves uh, at the banks of the Jordan River. As they're at the Jordan River, thank you so much. As they're at the Jordan River, uh, now uh, Moses sends spies over to, to give an account of the land. We know the story. The story is that 12 spies were sent out. 10 saw one thing. Two saw something else. Can I just stop right there for a moment? Can I tell you, isn't, isn't that like church folk that, that you can have 10 folk that can see one thing and two that will see something else and the two that saw something else are not going on what they see but on what God showed them and what God told them and that they walked out on faith and said yeah the people are great but we can take them because God is by our side. Uh, but you know what happened. Uh, the, the, the 10 uh, are saying no we can't do it. They're too big. They're too mighty and they talked of stoning Amen. Joshua and Caleb. Yes. And so God sends them into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, they marched around the wilderness. For 40 years, God did some shifting and moving in the wilderness. Yes. And now they find themselves, well, their children rather, find themselves back at this place again. What does the church do after it comes out of the wilderness? My homeless professor would say, you ought not ask a question, but, but I have to ask the question because I want us to think that what should we do after we've come out of the wilderness? What, what has the church done since it's been out of the wilderness? Well, what wilderness are you talking about? Well, if we can look back over the history of time, uh, the church has been in the wilderness a few times. If, if, you, if you could just take a walk with me in history, let's go back to the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. The church was in the wilderness. How do I know we were in the wilderness? Because, uh, because we were fighting Jim Crow. Y'all ain't gonna help me right now. We were fighting separate but equal. Uh, we, we, we were fighting all these things uh, that, that led into the civil rights movement. The church was in the wilderness. Uh, but, but what has the church done since we left the wilderness? And I hear God calling out to Joshua and saying, Joshua, your servant Moses is now dead. But I still have a promise for your people. 
And this is where I want to be on today because we got to understand that no matter how many wildernesses that the church goes through, God always has a promise for his people. I like this, I like this, I like this, I like this because in verse 4 he says this word, every place that the sole of your foot shall, shall, shall tread, I will give to you. That's a promise. I, he said, I promised it to Moses, now I'm promising it to you. He says I, that no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'm now with you, that I will not fail you, nor shall I forsake you. I, the church has to be reminded I, that no matter what comes our way, that God is always going to be with us, uh, that God is always going to stand beside us, uh, and as long as I got God by my side, uh, as long as we keep trusting in God, it does not matter what giant comes our way, the church can stand against it. Don't be afraid of this society. Don't be afraid of all the things that this society is offering the people of the world. Don't you be afraid that the church that can't, can't stand up against a, a government that says they love us but yet we can't trust. Y'all don't help me right now. Don't you, don't you stand? Don't you be afraid of, of, of what you see on TV? Don't you get confused that, that, that maybe, uh, that, 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 that just maybe that, that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Don't you get confused that God can't show up because God will show up. Here is... The first lesson that the church after the wilderness must remember. It must remember that the reason we were in the wilderness to begin with is because God was trying to cultivate us. Huh. Cultivation does not mean cancellation. Uh, let me see if I can help you here. Uh, we got to understand that, that he already promised us, um, he already had promised the church this. Uh, he already promised the children of Israel a promised land. Uh, and so now he's telling them, uh, and you are not mature enough to handle the blessing. Uh, so I'm going to take you into the wilderness so that I can cultivate you to be better so that when you come here again, you will know how to handle it. Let me see if I can help you here. See if I can help you here. There are sometimes God previews our blessing, but we're not in the right space in order to receive it. Uh, sometimes uh, God will show us uh, what we can have, uh, but our spiritual maturity is not at a place that where we can appreciate all that God is doing. Uh, so God sends us into a time and a place of cultivation. Let me see if I can help you. I said a time and a place because cultivation is tied to a time and a place. Uh, where did he send them? To the wilderness. How long? For 40 years. Uh, what happened in that 40 years? Well, uh, they, 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 they got organized in those 40 years. Uh, so people uh, that were naysayers died off. Y'all are going to help me right now. Uh, uh, now get this down. You notice that the whole time they're in the wilderness, God is multiplying while he's yet dividing. Y'all missed it. I think y'all missed it. I, that the whole time they're in the wilderness. Watch this. I, he is dividing the people up, but yet he's multiplying and adding to. God have mercy. Amen. See, cultivation is this. Sometimes we've got to cut some stuff off in order to grow. I, I, how many, how many, how many, how many? Folk do I have in here? They got flower gardens at home. Uh, that 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 they you know they got a green thumb. I, that's not me, but but it may be you. <laughs> and 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 you know that that sometimes you have to do something called pruning. Uh, you have to go outside and get your shears, and you have to cut the bushes back and cut the flowers back uh, so that so so that they can grow anew whenever spring times come. Uh, uh, you know, this is the time of year when you see a lot of pruning going on, a lot of a lot of cutting going on. Uh, and it looks like uh, the bush might look like you might be killing the plant. Uh, but, but what's really happening is that you are trimming it uh, so it can grow bigger and better. Uh, and that's how God does us. Uh, Sometimes God has to take the scissors to our life, uh, the shears to our life, uh, and cut some stuff off uh, so that we can be better cultivated uh, to be better when we come out of the wilderness. Here it is, here it is. The favor in this is this. The favor is not that he's going to deliver me. The favor is that he's going to hold me until I'm ready to be delivered. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And so they're in this, they're in this, this, this wilderness for 40 years. But here they are at the banks of the Jordan again. <laughs> now this way it get good. Whew, Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, I, I love this part of the story, y'all, because something good happens here. It's sad, but yet it's good. Watch this. The only two people <laughs> that survived the wilderness are the same two that they talked about killing. Watch this now. Watch this. <laughs> so, as Joshua shows up, he's reminded of all the trauma he faced. Watch this. When he was there 40 years earlier. Lord have mercy. I, and, and, and God wants to remind him yes. that, that you don't have to be afraid of what used to be. Right. Because as long as you trust me, <laughs> ah, Lord have mercy, I, I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, lesson, the lesson that the church must learn from this is that, is, is, is that we've got to learn uh, uh, to work in ministry even though we're in misery. All right, come on then. All right. Lord have mercy. We've got to learn how to work in the ministry, even though we might be in misery. And the one thing I love about the black church is that we know how to work while we've been in misery. We did it for over 400 years. Y'all are going to help me right now. We got up every day, worked from, we, we, you know how we work, from can to can. I, but still, I, we got up and we gave God the glory. Y'all are going to help me right now. I, I, you know how it is. I, the black church, we understand what it means to work, to be in ministry while we in misery. Because during the civil rights movement, I, we had water hoses turned on us, dogs turned on us. But we still said, ain't going to let nobody turn us around. Y'all, we got to learn how to work in ministry. While still yet in misery. Y'all go ahead and sit down. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. They, 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 they trying to push me here. <laughs> but look at this. Here it is. He has to deal with the trauma of what happened before when he wasn't in leadership, but now he's the leader. It's hard to work when you know folk talked about killing you. It's, it's, it's difficult to serve in what God wants you to serve in when folk don't like you. Y'all gonna help me. But can I stop by? Can I just tell you this on my way to heaven? I promise I'm almost done. That the one, the one thing that I've learned all these years of ministry is I can't be afraid of folk faces. Because I'm on assignment by God. And because I'm on assignment by God, it doesn't matter how you feel about me. It doesn't matter how you look at me. It doesn't matter what you think of me. I, if you got a problem, take it up with him. But I'm going to keep on serving God I, until he tells me to stop. This, this brother, I, I feel for him because he has to lead this church out of the wilderness into the promise, but he hurt. Lord have mercy. What do you do when God puts you on assignment to lead people out, but yet you need to be let out yourself? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do, Ebenezer? When it seems like uh, everything you do comes up wrong, uh, nothing you do comes up good, uh, but yet God has tasked you uh, to lead people. He's asked the church uh, to lead the people of God, to lead the people of the world, but yet the church got problems. Yes, sir. Now, y'all know I wasn't going to leave here without saying that. That's all right. The church got problems. I love us, but the church got problems. Can, can, I, can I go ahead and make it personal? The African-American church got some real problems. Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't want to. I know you weren't going to say amen there, but, but it's all right. I still love you anyhow. Right. And the problems we have is this, is that sometimes we can't get out of our own way. Right. So what? They got 400 members. Maybe that ain't what God had for you. God gave you what you could handle. And God gave you what you could deal with. And you got to be happy with, with uh, what God gave you. Because what God gave you, he knew you can handle it. But I've learned this. If I can be faithful over the few things, 
he'll then elevate me to have more. And I just need to know, do I got anybody in here that don't mind being faithful over the few things? He, he, he's, 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 he's at this place. This trauma is on him. I feel this, brother, because as African-American male, every day I walk down the streets, I go to work, I drive in my car with the trauma of what my ancestors had to deal with. Every time I drive down the road and I, and I see a policeman pull up behind me, I, I get a little tense. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Because I'm reminded that, that there were times when law enforcement wasn't so kind to me, not because of who I was, but because of the color of my skin. Y'all ain't gonna help me right now. I, 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 I go to work every day. I work in a school every day. I, and I and I educate black and brown children. I, and I look around I re, and, and I work in trauma knowing I, that I've got to do more for them I, because the world may not see them for who they are. I, and they've got to be doubly better than their counterparts. I, y'all, we, we live in a world of trauma. But then I'm reminded, I, God, you put me here for a reason. I, God, you allowed us to be here for a reason. And so because you got me here, I, you're going to give me the strength I, to to do what I have to do to be sure uh, that your church comes out of the wilderness. Here it is, here it is. Last thing and I'm done, I promise you. Mm. The late Samuel DeWitt Proctor, uh, he said that the best preaching isn't what's on the line, but what's in between the lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look what it says here. I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm done. He says, be strong and courageous for you shall put these people in possession of the land I'm reading again be strong and courageous for you shall put these people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors can I read it one more time just for just for good grace be strong and courageous for you shall put these people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Now, I, I, I hear what God is saying, but to understand what he's saying and to see what he's saying are two different things. He's saying, look now, I need you to do two things, Joshua. I need you to put aside the trauma and I need you to be strong enough to lead even though it may seem like you're not going nowhere. But I also need you to be courageous because you got to have the courage uh, to speak and tell the people, no, uh, I got to take us here. Uh, I've got to take us through that because this is where God is taking us uh, and God doesn't take us on anything uh, that we can't handle. Uh, I'm about to go home and go to my seat. Uh, but as I go to my seat, uh, I think I ought to tell you uh, that when you trust God, uh, that God will bring the church out of the wilderness. Uh, that when you lean on God, uh, he'll bring the church out of the wilderness. Uh, and what does the church do uh, after they've been in the wilderness? Well, it's real simple. Uh, all they got to do is keep on serving, uh, keep on believing, uh, keep on trusting, uh, and keep on knowing uh, that if it had not been uh, for the Lord who was on our side, uh, then where would we be? Yes, yes. This brother, these people are standing on the banks of greatness. And this time, the leader says, I won't let you get in your way. The Bible says this way. This time, they ain't sent no spies. He just went to the banks and started praying. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Black folk don't know when to shout. Sometimes in church, we ask too many questions of people who don't have the same vision that God has. And we go on their vision. I'm not, y'all, y'all, don't, don't, don't be mad at me, I promise you. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about here. Right? And, and we get opinions from others that, that, that don't care if you fail or if you don't fail. I, they just going on as soon as the wind blow, they go to the left. As soon as the wind blow, they go to the right. But I need to know, dude, does the church have some folk who going to be steadfast and unmovable, I, but always abiding in the work of the Lord I, and trusting him at his word? The church after the wilderness as we stand to our feet.